untouched, and what is unfolding around us affects us all. I began attending here at St. George's in the early part of March, and possibly three Sundays, and then there was the closure because of COVID-19. I was in the midst of selling my house, and it took much longer than anticipated because of what was going on. But I'm here now, actually walking distance, right around the corner, and I've moved here to be closer to my children, my five grandchildren, and I wish to serve with the church and also with the LGBTQ plus community in St. Catharines and in the Niagara region. I would like us to notice some facts here in the story of within the gospel reading. The story of a frightening storm, a time of chaos and uncertainty, not unlike what we're facing all of us around us now. Here in Matthew chapter 14, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back in the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. God's church has walked through many storms before, through many generations. They have, the church has experienced all the things that we are experiencing. COVID-19 has changed everything, and for us, it may seem new, but it's not new to the church. For throughout the centuries, the church has had to deal with plagues. The plague of Cyprian erupted in North Africa in the 300s. And the plague lasted for nearly 20 years with 5,000 people perishing each day in the city of Rome. Saint Cyprian was bishop at Carthage. And he said of the Christians, he said that they showed through their lives that they were different, that they had a hope of resurrection, a hope of eternity, a hope of life forever, and that was their victory. It is because of that hope that we as Christians are able to continue. The pandemic that we are experiencing today can be possibly an opportunity for us to show that faith, that hope that we have in Christ. So maybe meditating here on this passage, we see that Jesus' disciples were told to get in the boat and go to the other side of the lake. Very critically, we notice that when they were going across to the other side, they encountered one of the greatest storms there on Lake Galilee. As a matter of fact, it may even seem as if the storm was deliberate, that possibly by the hand of God, to test obedience. We, we don't know all the facts there. So maybe if we're in a storm today, it doesn't mean that you're out of God's will. We are in God's will. It means that God is going with us. That this very path of holiness oftentimes is not lined with beautiful flowers on each side. It's not a straight path. It's not a smooth path. This does not mean that we are out of will with the will of God. The disciples had listened carefully to the words of Jesus. And you know, if they had listened very closely, maybe they wouldn't have been as afraid. They could have maybe even enjoyed this trip a little more, like a roller coaster. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14 says, For 
we have become partakers of Christ if we behold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. I feel I need, possibly we need to be reminded of some things. That God is still on his throne. That God is still with his people. And we as the people of God have strength and adaptability. We are at our best when we're unified with God and with each other. So we're not alone in all this. We can share our fears, our concerns with each other. And that is not a sign, a sign of weakness. It is a sign of trust and faith. The promise is that God is with us. So if the creator of the winds and the waves and the oceans tells you to go to the other side of the lake, I can assure you that you will get there. And so in the midst of what we're going through, we need to heed the promise of God. It is important to realize some of the promises that we hear, even in Hebrews chapter 13, in verse 5 it says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I, in studying this passage, I found that in the original Greek, it had three, or pardon me, five negatives. Five negatives. It really was saying <clears throat> that God was proclaiming never, 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 never would he give up on you. That he would never leave you. So he's with you there when you were in ex extensive care in the nursing home. He's with you there in the hospital. He's with you there in your home, even in times of fear. He's with you even though you've lost your job. He is with you always. There's something else in this story that really interested me. It is the fact that even though the disciples couldn't see Jesus, I'm sure Jesus could see them. If you're out in the Sea of Galilee, you notice many mountains around you. And Jesus was up in one of those mountains, praying, watching. Now in the darkness, there was no possibility that the disciples would see Jesus. But Jesus saw them. He knew them. He knew the, the longitude, the latitude. He knew the position of that boat. He knew the strength of that boat. He knew the depth of the water. He knew the strength of everybody on that boat. He knew exactly the speed of the wind. And he didn't need a GPS. Because as God... He was exactly there with them in their time of struggle. The Bible says that God's eyes are over the righteous. God does not have eyes like us, but he looks over his own. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16, it says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. And then Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? Jesus even says that every hair in your head is counted. You should not be discouraged about things that happen today. For these words the words of Jesus are, fear not. You are so much more valuable than many sparrows. So I say to you today that in the midst of this crisis, which could get worse before it gets better, in the midst of the fear, in the midst of unanswered questions, let us always remember that God is with us. Another important fact is that the disciples didn't recognize Jesus in the storm initially. Well, there's many times, maybe in our lives, that we don't see Jesus in the middle of our storms. It's interesting that Jesus came to them at the very right time. 
The Bible speaks of it being around the fourth watch, which is, which is in the early morning. And Jesus is walking on the sea, and there, in their most desperate moments, they see him. Well, the distance of the Galilean Sea is maybe seven or eight miles at its most across from east to west. And this wind was against them. Maybe that's your story today. Maybe the wind is against you. The wind is actually against you and that Jesus now has come to you in your time of desperation. At the right time, Jesus comes to us. This coronavirus is going to be with us for a while. We will have, we all have responsibilities to ourselves, to our families, to take it seriously and to follow every precaution directed and suggested. But let's also listen to the words of Jesus. Matthew 14, Jesus spoke to them and said, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. Matthew chapter 9, he says, But behold, they brought to him uh, a paralyzed man. Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the man, Son, of, son be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven. And then John chapter 16, Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. What's Jesus saying? Cheer up. That's what he's saying very plainly. Cheer up. Listen to this. The storm, the wind that brought Jesus, brought Jesus walking across that lake as if it was like a, a marble floor. He walks to the disciples and they cry out, it's a ghost. Jesus said, do not be afraid. And Peter responding, saying, Lord, if you can, I will come to you on the water. And for a few moments, both of them were standing there walking on the water. Jesus comes to us during our biggest trials. But we need to know that he is there and that he walks with us throughout that storm. You know, Jesus could have stayed there on the shore. He could have stayed there on the shore and simply said, peace be still, and calm those waters. But he doesn't do that. He comes to them in the midst of the storm. He comes to them in that storm. Maybe in the storm of your life, in your room, in your home. Comes to you in the storm that's going on with your business. He comes to you when you're laid off from that job. He doesn't just stay on the shore. Jesus comes to his people. A number of years ago, while I ministered for a little church, uh, the Church of Christ in Fenwick, we had a member of the congregation whose daughter became extremely ill and it turned out that she had a very rare heart disease. Her mother was very concerned because this very same disease had claimed the life of a younger cousin. So we there at the church decided that we would have a prayer vigil on her behalf. And so every hour there was someone within the congregation praying for her. And then during the day, the, the church was filled with people. Her walls at her hospital uh, were covered with letters and cards. The doctors told her mother to prepare for the worst. Her heart was pumping at 18%. The medications were not working. Then suddenly there was a change. The doctors had no explanation for the recovery. She totally recovered. That was 20 years ago. 
She still is teaching as a special ed teacher with DSBN. We praise God for things like that. Prayers are heard, not always answered in this fashion, not always the way that we would like them, but God is in the midst of our storm and cares and walks with us over the turbulence. God does listen to the prayers of the righteous, as we see it says in 1 Peter 3, verse 12. Yes, we need to be able to, to pray, to pray for one another during these times. And that means not waiting for it to be asked to pray. When we know of someone who's in desperate times, going through difficulty, it's, it's a time for us to pray. The Bible says that Jesus got into the boat with them and they went to the other side. So today, my, simply my message is this, that Jesus Christ is in the boat with us and we, he will take us to the other side. Whether we live or die, the simple fact is that we will get to the other side. And this is a great opportunity for the church the church to be different than the world around. The world around is filled with panic and fear. We can be filled with trust and faith. So let's share our fears, our concerns with each other, not as a sign of weakness, but as a sign of faith. Amen.